This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus came down with the crowds and stood on a level place with a great crowd and his disciples and a great multitude of people from all of Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are those who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for what is it? For that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm going to do something a little different today, and I'm going to move around during the sermon. Let me get a little exercise. <laughs> But I think it'll also help us to hear these words of the scriptures in a way that makes sense to us and helps us to understand what they might mean for us this day. So uh, we heard these scripture readings from the Gospel of Luke and from Jeremiah and even the psalm that we sang together. And these scripture readings kind of presented to us these two choices, these two ways, these two realities that people of faith may find themselves in. So let's hear about those two ways, those two realities. First, I want to read for you the words of blessing that Jesus shares in the Gospel of Luke. This is what Jesus says about this group of people that may be blessed. Blessed are you who are poor, Jesus says. These are people who are really poor, not just poor in spirit per se. People who don't have enough money, don't have enough means to live their life. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry, people who don't have enough eat to eat, not enough for their families to eat. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep, who weep in sadness and sorrow at the tragedies and losses of life. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude, revile, and defame you on account of Jesus. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. Listen to this list of people who Jesus says are blessed by God, that is, regarded by God with favor, those for whom God has a special place in God's heart. The poor, the hungry, those who weep, those who are hated and persecuted, for Jesus' sake. But then Jesus turns the coin, doesn't he? Flips things on the other side to share woes. Woes, not a word we use a lot, but a word that means, alas, here is a warning for you. Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, who have plenty to eat, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, 
For that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Two different groups of people. One who Jesus speaks a word of blessing to. And another who Jesus speaks a word of warning to. The reading from Jeremiah did something much the same. It talked about those who trust in flesh who trust in mortals, who trust in themselves, and said those people are like those shrubs planted in the desert, which dry up. But those who trust in the Lord are like trees planted beside the waters, who stay nourished and nurtured by God. And the psalm said much of the same. There is a path that's marked by wickedness, and there is a path that's marked by righteousness. But you see what these readings are doing? They're drawing, in many ways, a, a line right down the middle. You didn't know when you chose your seats this morning <laughs> that you were picking on which side of the line you might be. But that's what these readings are doing. They're comparing the way of righteousness to the way of wickedness. They're comparing the way of trusting in God to the way of trusting in ourselves. And they're even comparing the way of being blessed by God in the difficult circumstances of our lives with a word of warning for God to not make the circumstances of our life what's most important. In some ways, maybe the, the readings invite us to consider on which side of this line we find ourselves. Are we those who are poor and hungry and weeping and therefore in need of God's blessing? Or are we those who are trusting in ourselves above other things? and therefore in need of God's warning. Suspect if we were honest with ourselves, we would probably say there's a little bit of us on each side of that line, isn't there? We are people who are both righteous and wicked, saint and sinner, faithful and unfaithful. This is a hard reading from Jesus, but one thing that I noticed this week as I read over it is that it says at the beginning of the story this little detail that maybe didn't really mean anything, but maybe it could mean something to us. It says before Jesus shared this series of blessings and woes with the disciples that he went and he stood, did you hear what it said? In a level place. In a level place. The middle here is like that level place. It's the place where all of us meet, you know, figuratively for sure, but literally here in worship, we meet in the middle here in this place. We come as saints and sinners, as people who have been righteous and wicked, as people who are sometimes faithful and sometimes unfaithful. We meet in the middle. Here in worship. And because of that, it's kind of interesting to notice what things are right in the middle of our worship space here. Like this font. This place where we celebrate and remember the sacrament of baptism. This place that levels us, that makes us all Recipients of God's grace and belonging. We meet here in the middle around this font to remember God's promise to love us and know us and forgive us always. And here in the middle is this cup of blessing, this table of the sacrament of Holy Communion. It stands here in the middle of our worship life to remind us that through this means of grace, 
God welcomes us, no matter how faithful or unfaithful we have been, that these gifts of the very presence of Jesus are given to us. And then here, at the top, in the middle of our worship life, is the cross. The cross, which stands as this symbol that says Jesus opens his arms to all. There's that saying that maybe you've heard from time to time that says, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Have you heard that? The ground is level at the foot of the cross, which means something like there's no tier, there's no favorite, there's no um, that we are all equal before Jesus, our Lord with outstretched arms. Jesus has different words to speak to us wherever we may find ourselves on the sides of these lines or, or anywhere in between. We come to worship and meet in this middle and and if we are the ones who need a word of warning from the Lord, who find ourselves trusting in ourselves and our things and our success too much, Jesus says, be careful. Whoa, look out. And if we come to worship as those who are lacking, who are mourning, who just long to trust in the Lord, and Jesus has a word of blessing. That's the Jesus who reigns from the cross. The Jesus who meets us in the middle, meets us wherever we are. So this day, I invite us to realize what is in the middle of our life together as people of faith and worship. These means of grace this sign and instrument of God's redemption, the cross, the table, the font, our Lord Jesus, who meets us in the middle and speaks the word we need to hear. Amen.